morning. Uh, welcome to worship this morning, those of you who are gathered in this space with us and those of you who are watching from home. Uh, I know that there's some rampant sickness happening uh, uh, throughout the community of Rochester, so I know a number of you wanted to be here with us this morning, but called in sick. So uh, may God be with you uh, as you recover from your various illnesses. Uh, this is the third Sunday in Advent. Uh, uh, during worship this morning, we will add, uh, light our Advent candle. We will also be celebrating communion. So if you're watching at home, you'll want to make sure that you grab your communion elements so you can participate in God's meal uh, when it comes to that part of our worship service this morning. Also, uh, we will be receiving your prayer requests here uh, during the offering time for those of you who are at home watching. And if you have a prayer request that you would like us to share during worship, uh, simply type that into the Facebook chat and we will make sure to include it uh, this morning. Uh, that being said, I'm going to ask that you please join in seeing our opening song after we do our land acknowledgement. So I invite you to read the words on the screen with me. People of Hope is located on the original and ancestral homelands of the Wapatawan peoples, and we give thanks for their presence here since time immemorial. We also wish to recognize and honor all our indigenous siblings who have and continue to call this land their home. I invite you to join in singing our opening song. Someone shouting from the desert, someone shouting from the sea, someone shouting from the mountain, someone shouting from the valley Messiah. shouting from the city I am young I am old someone shouting from the country I am lonely I am old shouting I am broken someone shouting make me whole someone shouting come and change me someone shouting save my soul again. Welcome to worship. My name is Pam. I'm one of the volunteer worship leaders here at People of Hope. And welcome, whether you are in person with us today or in spirit with us um, on uh, YouTube or on um, Facebook. So welcome. Remember that the purple prayer request cards are in your white binder um, 
if you're here in person and you can take one of those out of the purple pencil pouch um, and then we'll collect those during the offering and if you are at home if you want to send those through the Facebook chat we'll be sure to get those as well all right we do our call to worship I will be the one and you will be the all <coughs> keep watch look up for soon the heavenly host will appear and proclaim the good news of Jesus's birth we watch for the light and listen for the voice of God's messengers today and every day. Do not be afraid. God's messengers proclaim good news of great joy for all people. We gather like shepherds and sheep in a field, waiting for the good news of great joy. In the darkest of nights and in the brightest of days, we watch and we wait. Good news is on the way. Come, let, let us, us worship. worship. We continue with our Advent candle lighting, and I am the substitute candle lighter this morning. I'm going to, in our midst, in our most desperate times, by day or by night, the hope of Christ may be found. We watch and we wait to witness the hope of heaven making a place here on earth. We light the candle of hope, because hope Because hope has come to us. When we are overwhelmed with conflict without or within, the peace of Christ may be found. We welcome the peace of Christ, present among us and available to all. We light the candle of peace, because peace has come to us. Whether we find ourselves in the dark, cozy realm of nighttime, or the blazing brightness of day, God's good message of joy has come to us to cheer our hearts. Today, we light the candle of joy, celebrating the good news of a baby to be born in Bethlehem. Please read with me. Welcome, joy of Christ. Even in times of grief and sorrow, you never forsake us or leave us alone. Fill our hearts with joy today. Sing, here we go. You are the
Join me in the opening prayer. Our Emmanuel, God with us in light and darkness, you meet us wherever we gather, whether shepherding in the fields, protesting in streets, connecting online, or meeting in buildings, your spirit finds us, enlivens us, and sustains us. We invite you to bring joy into our places of sadness, fear, anger, and hopelessness wherever there is suffering among us. On this day of joy and gladness, call our attention to the good news of great joy available to all. Make us collaborators and co-messengers of that joy as we minister to one another in worship. Amen. Please join me for the confessional prayer. God with us in light and darkness, you created a world with abundant sources of joy, but we have not always received your good gifts. We have turned to cheap thrills, which fade away quickly. We have used our planet's resources for brief ease and entertainment, even when the damage is lasting. We have spent money on pleasures that rob the dignity and livelihood of laborers. We have chosen the latest technology or opportunity over the most profound justice. We have judged the joy of others. Forgive us, God. Help us find joy in sustainable resources. Help us begin again today. Amen. Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. Our sins are forgiven and removed as far as the east is from the west. Every morning is a new opportunity to discover joy in God's good world. Receive the joy of pardon today. You are loved and you are forgiven. Good morning. <clears throat> the first reading. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstoppable, or unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, 
the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are, royal, are, <clears throat> are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I'd like to invite the kids to come forward for the young member missionaries message. Nice. Thanks, Josie. Yeah, you're missing some teeth. Two. Two teeth. Wow. It's good to see you guys. How are you today? Okay. Uh, well, I'm glad that you're good. Okay. So today we're going to have a little bit of a test in church. And I know that tests are your favorite things on the face of the earth, right? Yes. So Uve is going to chill out today. And it's just going to be you and I who are going to talk. Okay. So the first question on my test is, uh, who can define happy for me? Yeah, Charlie, what does, what does happy mean? You're smiling. Joyful. Joyful. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a second. Riker, what does happy mean? So those are things that make us happy, right? We smile when we're happy, but playing with stuff can also make us happy. But what does happy mean? To feel good. To feel good. Okay, we'll say that. Happy makes us feel good, and when we're happy, we smile, and playing with things might make us happy, okay? So my second question is, who can define joy? Yes, Ben. It's like happy, but more happier. Awesome. Yeah, Riker. It's like, of course, when I mean, I think I always mean joy. Okay, that's all right. Uh, so, for Ben, joy is happier, happy, but happier, right? So here's my third question, and this is the most important of the, the three questions. Can you have joy and not be happy. You can because joy can make you sad, but you can have peace with your joy if joy makes you happy. Okay, so Riker said you can because you can be be sad, but then after playing with someone, you can feel joy. Yeah. I disagree. You disagree. Happy. Thanks, Josie. Sure. Aha. Uh -huh. So Ben says that if you're happy, you're also joyful. But if you're joyful, you're also happy because they mean the same thing. I'm going to disagree with you, Ben. I think joy and happy are two different things. Okay. Happiness is one of those things that happens to us when something good might happen to us, right? We might get a toy that we wanted. We might get that last piece of chocolate cake before anyone else or the last piece of pepperoni pizza, we might get happy because a friend calls out of the blue and invites us to go sledding in the snow because it's a snow day, right? All those things happen at certain instances in our life, certain moments in our time. And, and happiness for me is an emotion that I feel at various times and various points because something special happens. Now, joy is something different because I think joy is how I live my life all the time, even when I'm sad. And joy for me is, is kind of similar to happiness, but it's different. I can live my, my life with joy. I can live my life at peace, which joy and peace are more similar to me than joy and happiness. And I can do that and have joy in my heart even in sad times. And the reason I can have joy in my heart in, during those sad times is that I know that that joy is going to continue even when I'm feeling sad. And that joy comes from knowing that I 
am loved by God and that God's never going to leave me alone. All right? Yeah. Overjoy. Can you be overjoyed? Yes. How? By, by doing like your favorite toys and like, 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 oh, blessing and stuff like taking okay. pizza and, and when you want at like the same day, that's like kind of like. So you can get overwhelmed with happiness or overwhelmed with joy is what you're saying? Yeah. Right. I think there's going to be a day that's coming up pretty soon where I hope you are all overwhelmed with joy, okay? So we're going to say a prayer today just to thank God for the gift of joy in our lives, all right? So can you pray with me? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day, for these people, and for the gift of joy, a gift that never goes away. Amen. Okay, hey guys, you can go back to your seats, all right? Good job. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God says, let there be peace in this place, and there shall be peace. I'm going to invite you to please stand as you're able to share a uh, sign of peace or a word of peace with your neighbor, or you can sh share joy with your neighbor as well. So good morning. It's so nice to see you all here this morning on this third Sunday of Advent. Uh, and as you saw earlier today, uh, we've lit our third candle on our Advent wreath, and our third Advent candle is pink. Um, and, it's, uh, and it's pink because it marks that this is the Sunday of joy. Um, and as you look at the text given uh, for preachers to talk about, on this Sunday, we're usually given four different te texts, an Old Testament text, a Psalm reading, a New Testament text, and a Gospel reading. We typically just use two of those. Like today, we use the Old Testament reading and the New Testament reading. Um, today is a special Sunday in the church year because there is actually a suggestion that we skip, the, that more traditional churches substitute the Psalm text with another gospel reading today. And that gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Luke. So we're going to share that with you this morning. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman Chosen one of 
God knows And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. You can sing with me if you want to. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you. Strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humbling the proud of heart. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble apart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forever. So this passage in Scripture is known as uh, both the Annunciation and the Magnificat, right? They're from the Gospel of Luke, very early and in the Gospel of Luke, when the angel visits Mary and lets Mary know that she is going to bear a child and that this child is going to be the Savior of the world. Now this is a very interesting time for Mary to receive this message because Mary is quite a young lady and, and um, she's not yet married and being pregnant uh, would have caused her much fear and anxiety. She would have been shunned by the community that she found herself living in. She would have been shunned by her parents and her relatives. They would have marked Mary as an unclean woman. They would have cast her aside, thrown her out of town, um, and, and bad things would have happened to Mary. And Mary responds in a very unexpected way. She responds not out of fear, but she responds with this song of great joy. In the midst of fear, Mary responds with joy. And she sings this beautiful song, giving thanks and praise to God for picking her uh, for this most important duty, this most important task. And then she goes on to say what the results of, of this task are going to be, that the hungry are going to be fed, fed, that people who take too much pride and arrogance in themselves will be humbled. She talks about a reversal of the world in the midst of fear, in the midst of what should cause great panic, Mary responds with joy. It's a beautiful, beautiful section of scripture. And it's not only beautiful for the words that it expresses, it's beautiful because of the call that it gives to each and every one of us as chosen people of God as well. We can be overwhelmed by fear. 
especially in this day and age. Fear that we won't have enough. Fear that our economic system is collapsing. Fear of violence. Fear of hatred. Fear of bigotry. Fear of sexism. And if we let this fear take root and hold in our hearts, we can become very bitter and angry people. Unable to find happiness and joy in the world. Advent is the season of, of waiting in anticipation for the baby, for the Messiah to be born. And in that waiting, we lift up these words of love, peace, hope, and joy. In the midst of unanswered questions, in the midst, midst of anticipating the world to change, we lift up these action words, these words that call us to do certain things and respond to that time of anticipation and waiting with activity, with hope, with love, with peace, and with joy. You see, this waiting of this Advent season isn't a passive waiting game. The season of Advent is about, about us acting and, and living out this season in our daily lives, especially with those whom we come into contact with, so that when we are afraid, we can find that joy. When we are feeling hopeless, we can find that hope. When we're feeling unlovable, we can know that we're loved. And in the midst of violence and despair, we can find peace. Now Mary's song is, is absolutely beautiful. She's overwhelmed with this call from God. And maybe, just maybe, as we sit here today, maybe we should feel a little overwhelmed by this call from God too. That in the midst of life's struggles, we need to to remember and recall how God is present and alive and active and how God has been there for us and how God remains to be there for us even when we struggle to feel the presence of God in our lives. You see, siblings in Christ, today is Joy Sunday. And as I was telling the young member missionaries today, joy is, is, a, is a way to live life. It's not a fleeting thing. It's not something that comes in and out. It's something that should be the undercurrent of how we operate in the world. So let us be people who seek out that joy in our daily lives, even in the midst of struggle. Let us find joy in the fact that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, those who have gone before us, those who are gathered with us in this place today, those whom we are in relationship with, that will point out joy to us, even when it's hard for us to see it ourselves. And may we go out and sing joy to the world, the Lord is coming, and the Lord is here, and the Lord is love, and so are you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Sweet, sweet.
Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we collect our offering. And we thank you for all those gifts that you give of your time, your talents, and your treasures. So there are ways that you can give if you're not here. Um, those are on your screen as well. So thank you.
Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. We continue this morning with the prayers of the people. Um, I will pop on to the Facebook live stream here um, to make sure that I have covered everyone's prayer requests. I will end each prayer with the words, Lord, listen to our hearts, and I invite you to respond with hear our prayers. So let us pray together. Most holy and gracious God, I thank you for this day of grace. I thank you for bringing us here uh, together uh, to worship and, and praise you. And gracious God, we ask that you continue to, to watch over us, uh, be with us, um, and that you receive these uh, prayers with us, from us, this morning as well. Gracious God, we share these following prayer requests with you. Lord, please be with the Wagner and Reedstrom families as their father has health concerns. And be with the family of Bishop Lene at this time of his passing. May they feel your comfort and joy for their lives on earth and lives in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those battling depression and grief. Give them guidance to seeking care. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. Dear Lord, guide my brother through recovery after his surgery. Also my friend Bob, as he recovers from a nasty fall. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. Please, God, wrap your loving arms around my sister Peggy and her family as they deal with Peggy's recent diagnosis of dementia. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. Prayers for those with influenza for healing and restoration. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. Be with Gloria and her family and friends as she enters her last days. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are anxious, um, who anxiously seek employment. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we lift our silent prayers to you now. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We are going to continue with our communion liturgy this morning, so those of you who are watching at home, you'll want to make sure that you have your communion elements close by so you can participate in God's meal. Uh, for those of you who are gathered in this space, uh, if you are not yet com comfortable coming forward to receive communion, there are some prepackaged communion elements at the back of the room uh, that you can pick one up and, and participate in the meal that way as well. So we continue. Whether you are a shepherd in a field, a child in a pew, or a traveler in search of a home, if you find yourself under a deep burden of grief or a moment of ecstatic joy, whether you are exhausted, sick, Sober, addicted, doubting, believing, waiting, wanting, wishing, depressed, fit, fat, or fabulous. Wherever, whoever, however you are today, if you desire to commune with Christ, you are welcome at this table of love. Ready your heart to meet this sacred grace open to all. We remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. I ask that you please pray. God, our loving parent, meet us here as we share these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the life and blessing of Christ, that we may be lights of love and justice to the world. Holy Spirit, unite us in Christ's mission. Help us care for one another and for our community until love and justice reign and we feast at his heavenly banquet together. To Christ, our friend and brother, to the almighty creator, to the Holy Spirit, our comforter, be glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God given freely to all of God's people. And absolutely everyone is welcome at God's table. We'll commune by moving from the back of the worship space to the front down the center aisle. I invite you to sanitize your hands, reach in, grab a communion cup. You'll be greeted by a server uh, who will provide you with the bread. Then you'll move over to the side and, and take the wine. We invite you to dispose of your used communion cups and the baskets provided off to the sides and then to find your way back to your seats down the side aisles. If you prefer to have communion with a uh, gluten-free bread, just indicate that as you come forward. Also, if you prefer to have communion with grape juice rather than wine, simply go to the server with the red ribbon tied around the bottom of their chalice. Again, everyone is welcome at God's table. First, I'd like to invite our communion assistants as well as our musicians to make their way forward.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and in his peace. Amen. And I ask that you please pray with me. God with us in light and darkness, you have filled us with the bread of life and the cup of blessing. We are sustained by the eternal joy that the, that love feast, inaugurated in suffering so long ago, but persistent in hope through the ages. May the gift of your table preserve our hope until we meet again to feast together. Amen. Just a few announcements as we conclude our time of worship here uh, this morning. First, there will be no adult learning time again this Sunday, nor will there be adult learning time again until the new year. So uh, know that as you plan accordingly. Invite you to grab a cup of coffee and a cookie, chat with some friends. Uh, we'll be hanging out uh, and would love to visit with you. Um, there is learning time for our kiddos today as they continue to practice for the Christmas program. For those learning time students who have yet to attend a practice, you can still show up and be in the program next week. It's going to be killer. So we'd love to have you uh, participate in that practice. So that will happen during learning time today. We also have a special practice scheduled for next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. So uh, even if you've not been to a practice before that Saturday morning, you can show up and be in the Christmas program on Sunday. What a deal that is, right? So again, uh, learning time kids have a Christmas program rehearsal today, next Saturday at 10 a.m., uh, the Learning Time students then will present that Christmas program uh, next week during worship. Uh, you will not have to hear a sermon from me, so thank you, Jesus, right? So uh, the kids will be preaching next Sunday in church. Uh, this week, we have some events going on. Uh, first, we have beer and carols happening this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. at Forger Brewery. Uh, that event, even though it's held at that brewery, is really for anybody of any age. So come and sing some holiday songs. We will be taking a free will donation um, as part of, of those festivities to help supplement uh, the resource rooms in uh, the Rochester high schools as well as RCTC. Now those resource rooms aren't rooms where people go to get additional help academically. These resource rooms are really places where students can go if they don't have enough food to eat, if they don't have warm enough clothes to wear, they need some personal uh, hygiene products, they can go there and get those items for free. So we're going to collect the money, buy those items, and then distribute those to those high schools. So um, if you come to that Beer and Carols, know that we will be asking for that donation. If you can give, that would be absolutely awesome. I do need some help on Tuesday uh, from anyone with a pickup truck who can help me deliver a piano to Forger Brewery sometime during those morning hours. So if you are available and can do that, it won't take a lot of time, um, I will uh, buy you a cup of coffee at Forager after we deliver the piano. So uh, just let me know. Uh, I can't do it by myself. Then we have Advent worship this coming Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. We're going to be offering it two more times. We'd love to have you join us uh, for those worship services. It's all a sung liturgy, a time just to, to sit back and relax and, and be with some other people in the midst of our, our, our hectic schedules. So love to have you be here uh, next uh, Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, then again, we have that Learning Time uh, children's program as well as... Um, uh, uh, worship services. I don't know why I was having such a hard time coming up with that concept next Sunday morning. The following week we have Advent worship and then we have a blue Christmas service. Uh, you'll hear more about that uh, next week. And then we have our Christmas Eve services at 4 p.m. and at 9 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Uh, real quickly, I don't know how many of you are on Facebook and, 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 and watch the People of Hope page. But if you do, you would have noticed that on Wednesday of this week, I overfilled our tiny food pantry um, as a little bit of an experiment. We had a, a, a community group, a quilting community group, call me up on Tuesday and say, hey, do you guys distribute food? And I was like, absolutely, we distribute food. And they're like, well, I'm going to bring you some food. And they filled our tiny pantry, essentially. Um, that food is now gone. If you drove by the tiny food pantry, uh, which clearly means there continues to be a need in this community for folks to have access to food. 
So in the next few weeks, if you're out and about and you have a little bit of extra uh, money that you can buy a few extra non-perishable food items that you can donate to the tiny food pantry, uh, that would be uh, absolutely fabulous. Uh, we have a hard time keeping it stocked. So I invite you to consider uh, being part of, of that ministry here at People of Hope as well. Um, I think that's all the announcements I have this morning, so I'm going to invite you to please stand as you're able to join in singing our final song. Kiddos, you can come grab an instrument and play along, or anyone can really grab an instrument and play along if you want to. Since the beginning, joy has been part of our story. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed, it was good. The seeds of joy were sown in the promise made to Hannah, who praised God, saying, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. David rejoiced when the Ark of the Covenant returned to Israel. He danced with all his might with shouts and the sound of the ram's horn. When Esther delivered her people from the hands of evil Haman, their sorrow turned into rejoicing and their mourning into feasting. Even in lamentation, the people of God find joy. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. And joy was made incarnate in the person of Jesus, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. 
receive the benediction. Siblings in Christ, do not be afraid of the light or the darkness. Go into the world and bring light to the lost and darkness to the weary. Receive this blessing. May you find hope in the sunrise and comfort in the sunset. May you be beacons of light and shelters of warmth for the travelers surrounding you. May you remember the hope of Christ lives in you. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will.